few of the Boston Celtics. You better bring in either former player who, who maybe doesn't have head coaching experience in the NBA, like a Chauncey Billups, like maybe a Juwan Howard, who I don't think they can get, but I tweeted out there from Michigan. I don't think he leaves because he's got one son who's a junior or senior in high school and another son who's on the team now. But I think, I think Juwan Howard would be a name that I would look at uh, or a former NBA coach, a la head coach, you know, a, a Lloyd Pierce, you know, a, a Jason Kidd. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big, from what I've heard, like, I don't think they go the Jason Kidd route. I, I just don't. I'd be shocked. Yeah. Frankly, the Pierce one too worries me that being out there with that hand report. Huh? Lloyd Pierce. Oh, Lloyd. I'm not, I'm not. Oh, you, you, you thought yeah, I meant Paul Pierce. For some reason, I, <laughs> I'm like, no. Let's just, you know, Paul, you know Paul that name's going to start whatever. floating around. Yeah, let's do it. I've go already ahead. seen KG this morning on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, well, Lloyd but, Pierce didn't work with Trey Young. Like, what's it going to, is it really going to work here? I, I like Lloyd Pierce, but again, I, you know, to me, like a Chauncey Billups, you know, he'll have respect. The players know who he is. You get a veteran with him, a former head coach, kind of like Steve Nash did with Dan Tony. Why, why not? Like, like the staff is going to be super important with this, with the head coach. And that's where I think Brad went wrong a little bit too, is mm -hmm. he didn't have strong personalities. He didn't have a guy that commanded respect from the get-go. And he was fine for a while. But then I, I think things change a little bit. It is yeah. a bummer to some degree. I mean, just thinking five years ago, what we thought of Brad and what he was going to end up being here and just in the whole of the basketball world, he was on fire. He was pushing all the right buttons. He was innovative. He had this team playing above expectations. And this is, this is essentially it here as far as his coaching career but, here in Boston. But Brad, uh, Jeff, and, and, yeah, that's what's weird is, is so Jeff, like, as you, you – Two things. One, do you view this as a promotion, or, or uh, no, or or is Brad? That's moved? that's what I was telling you or this morning, Brad John. This is moved as head coach. Yeah, of course, no? it's not a promotion. Brad Stevens wants to be the coach and lead them to a championship. He doesn't want to be the GM and lead them to. He's a coach at his so core. It he's makes you know. This makes no sense to me. But it does like, if you're looking at Wick and you're just from the money ball. perspective. Yeah. From if you're just looking at Wick's wallet, yes. Right. right. <laughs> but Wick, Wick looks at his wallet. That's going to yes. be my burner account. I'm going to go make it right now. Wick's wallet. Wick's um, wallet. So, wallet. We and, won. We won today. <laughs> so anyway, but that's that's what freaks me out is, two, is if it's a demotion, you have a guy who's grudgingly taking a really important job. That's bad. Uh, is number grudgingly? I don't know if Brad is grudgingly. I think Brad is smart enough, as I said a month ago, to understand that, like, this is going to end badly. This is not changing. They need – Brad's smart enough to know they need a new voice. Well, now they have it. Now Brad's not going to be that voice. They need somebody that may be a little bit tougher. That And now Brad, Brad's probably also thinking of it from the GM role. It's like, okay, Danny didn't get me the, the, the players maybe I needed for my system. I've been in that other seat recently. I can work with the next guy and we can figure out what players for the system or whatnot. Like, I, I don't know. Again, I just don't see Brad in this seat long term. Like, I'm not saying that he's gone in two weeks, but like, I think he's gone in a year. Like, I, I think he, he gets another job. Like, whether it's college, NBA, and, and, and I wonder if all this stuff started when the Indiana job opened. I wonder if that makes sense, right? In motion for this. Yeah. That would make that would make the most sense. Right. Uh, but I, the thing I wanted to follow with you here is if all of this is the case, and we don't know that, but if you said and you strongly believe the players had it wasn't working anymore with Brad and the players, you, his voice is now still going to be prominent within yeah. the organization. Differently, though. Very different. 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 Yeah. But you're still, it's leadership top down. This is a guy delivering the message. Uh, you know, if they so, weren't, if they weren't I, buying what he was selling on the court, I don't, do you want this guy making decisions about your life and things around you? Like, see, I don't I'm know. not worried about that, Can John, you separate because it's, the it's, two? Yeah. it's so different. Like what Jeff just got at. It there. is like, different. Your, but, your voice in the room 
is much different than your voice Let's is. Let's put like it this way, Jeff. Jeff. You've got an editor-in-chief at your paper, and all of a sudden he gets bumped up, and now he's the GM, and you hated him as the editor-in-chief. Yeah. Yeah. You're not but loving they didn't him. hate Brad. Nobody they didn't hate him. Brad. You're done. You're, you're done listening to what he has to tell you as the editor in chief. And now he's the GM. Are you like, well, I'm still kind of under his umbrella of this is his vision for what we're supposed to be. Yeah, it's he not trade him now. He's huh? got a different type of, of, of role where he can trade him now. Yeah. You know, so it's like he does again. Everybody knows Brad is smart. Nobody comes away from being around Brad Stevens and saying, Oh man, he's a more. He doesn't know what he's doing. It was more of like pushing the right buttons, changing the like just a new voice. It, it had just it had run its course. Sometimes that happens where things just run their course, and I think that was the case with Brad. These young guys who were very impressionable when they came up, right? Tatum, Jalen Brown, like they weren't. And again, I I still go back to the fact of you can have a new coach here. And I'm still not certain that the pieces fit together with Kemba, Jalen, and Tate. Yeah, all of a sudden, Stevens has big roster questions to address here. Right. And that's where I'm most concerned. I'm not concerned at all with what you just mentioned, John. I think when now that he's in the office, the players aren't even going to think of him. You know, you're just in that little bubble with your I, team my and your coach. Concern. Yeah. My biggest I'm, one is... I'm worried, what are Stevens... Are Stevens what are yeah. Steven's philosophies for this team? Are you trading picks? Are you trading Kemba? Are you trading uh, the parts of the core of this team? These are huge decisions that need to be made right now to have long-term implications for this team uh, that he is suddenly uh, assuming here. So all of a sudden, like you were... This just this has to be a long haul decision to me. This can't be one year and then I'm going to go coach somewhere else because you are making vital decisions right now that are going to chart the ten year path of this team. That's what the I the entirety don't get. of the Tatum Brown, yeah. uh, you know, era here in this in this city. The good thing is Brad knows the the roster like yes. that. He already has certain, um, you know, thoughts of uh, and beliefs of certain of players, but nobody knows him better than Brad. Right now, that doesn't mean he utilized them all correctly. <laughs> you know what's so crazy is looking back on that presser last night. He was talking like a GM. We have ways we can improve. We can do we've, it with development. We've, yeah, we've Listen, assa- he, he we've assessed somebody, the roster. <laughs> he called somebody close to him uh, yes. a week ago in college, and 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 according to my source, this morning who I just talked to a few minutes ago, and basically was asking him about personnel. I, we're gonna have to talk about personnel soon. Yeah. So like. There were hints this was going to happen. And again, I, I think, you know, you kind of knew this is where it was headed because this team wasn't going to do anything in the postseason. So um, yeah. it didn't take long. And I think it's smart because at least you did it quickly. You can get ahead on the coaching search, but you just want to know now, like, all right, Brad, what's your what's your list? Everybody's got their list. Yeah. Like, what's your list? And don't make it about your boy. Like, whoever it is, don't do it just because you're, like, close with them. Find the right guy for the job. If it's Chauncey Billups, if it's Juwan Howard, if it's, you know, Lloyd Pierce, um, somebody like that, and yeah. get them, get whoever it is. If it's a, a guy who has not been a head coach, get them somebody on the bench that, yeah. that is well-respected, that can help. I don't think Brad really – I don't think he's had that. Yeah, a week ago he was Googling how to GM um, – and so here so, we are now. I, I think we're going around and asking, like, so GM for dummies. GM so for dummies. I'm gonna, the one out there. I got some questions for you. So uh, the question I have here, Jeff, is do Tatum and Brown get consulted on this? Because that was the big thing with Ainge, is that Ainge was making these decisions. It was his, and he wasn't. You know, it was always his call. Like, he yeah. was in charge of this. He wasn't consulting players. It didn't even seem like he was consulting Brad a ton on stuff. Uh, now, is that change with Brad? Does Brad kind of have to take Brown and Tatum? And this actually does go back to what you were talking about, John. Is there still a relationship there between Brad, Tatum, and Brown in terms of the direction of this team? Who do you guys want as coach? What kind of things are you were looking for in terms of roster Jeff? adjustments? Jeff, do you think they're, do you think one, they knew or they're shocked this morning that this is happening? Two, are they on board? Three, will they have input in a head coaching decision? Uh, or, you know, are they going to talk to them about it? I'm sure they'll talk to them. I'm sure they'll talk to them, but it's not like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to make the decision. And who well, the next. 
What's more important right now than for because you hate to be in this situation. You want to have stability as a franchise where players come and go, people come and go, but you know what you're doing. This is far from stable, so I'd be a little worried if I were, you know, uh, concerned about the future of Tatum and Brown. But right now with this organization, what's more important than making sure these guys are happy? No, you have to. You have to. Right. But that doesn't mean you let them handpick either. Of course not. You know, they're, but they're, sometimes they're you do. Thirty year olds. They're not thirty year olds who have been in the league incredibly uh, long period of time to where they know all these guys. They can ask their buddies on those teams. I'm sure, you know, Jason Tatum can call Trey Young when Lloyd Pierce's name comes up and find out, well, what the hell happened there, right? What happened in Atlanta? Why, why did Lloyd Young not make it? And what were your issues with them? But even if that's the case, is Jason Tatum really going to be the type to walk into Brad's office and say, hey, I don't want you hiring Lloyd. No, he's not. Like Tatum's not going to do that. Like Jalen would would have more of the personality to be able to go in and 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 they should consult with both and make them feel like I, I I'd make them feel like they're a part of the process, but I wouldn't let them really be a part of the process. How's that? Sure. Yeah, I think fair enough. I just think involved. There's a difference between from my experience as a boss or a manager in my life, involving people in the process is sometimes enough. Um, right. whether or not they make the decision, whether or not they even want to make the decision, just literally listening. Hey, what are your thoughts here? You know, making them feel like they're part of it, making them feel important. I think anything that happens, and like we, we, we referenced the Aaron Rodgers situation last night and Rodgers bit of a diva here, but ultimately like just sometimes just the phone call or the, the, the let's have a meeting and let's talk about it. And what do you guys want to see in the next thing goes a long way. And I think like, I don't know where those guys heads are at right now. Are they happy with what's happening today? Are they like puzzled? Are they, are they nervous about the future? Like, does it, does it, why do people keep texting Stackhouse in the chat? Tell them to stop. Tell the people in the chat to stop with the Jerry Stackhouse, please. Yeah. Please. Well, you and everybody. I could have coached Jerry Stackhouse's G League team to the title. He had Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet on that team. Okay? He has sucked at Vandy. Like, no, no. He couldn't get Carolina. Roy Williams made sure, like, he wasn't getting Carolina, the head job there. No, Jerry Stackhouse. <laughs> Here it comes, John. Before, it's don't ask me who the next coach is from everybody. Now everybody's going to have their idea in the chat yeah. in terms of who's next. <laughs> Listen, for me, for me again, I would look at Chauncey Billups and Juwan Howard with – and Juwan Howard's been a head coach at Michigan the last couple of years. So I, I like that Yes, one. I love I love the idea of giving someone a chance. Becky Hammond, even, who I see tossed around here, someone who hasn't had that opportunity. Yeah. We've seen Lloyd Pierce, and we saw how it went, fair Mark or Pierce, not. Jason Kidd. Some of the names here, like Mark Few, no, like not going to work. One player, one one thrown out I saw, it, just not here, but uh, Atkinson. Not here, Laranaga, hell no. Not Kenny here. Atkinson? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, doesn't fit the mold of what you're saying they need. But this is a guy who also had a really good pedigree where things just went south fast. Who was a very respected coach. I'd be surprised if they don't go with a black head coach. I'd be very surprised. Or a a player for sure. Yeah. Right. Right. I just I I think they're going to end up, um, you know, with everything that that, that's kind of happened around here. And I think you need a former like to me, you need a former player in that role now. With the way the NBA is, you need young, like Doc is about as old as you want to go as a as a coach these days. Younger is better, um, but you also have to find somebody who's young, who, you know, like commands respect. Like a guy, I think, you know, could be a great coach down, like a Udonis Haslam type. Like, you can't hire him yet, but bring him on as an assistant. Bring on Udonis Haslam on your staff. And, and and to me that he should have been on this staff. Yeah. So like, that's what I'm in favor of the Atkinson or the re and I'm not saying Atkinson would do it. I'm a favor of the veteran. I, I'm a favor of the Brooklyn situation, you know, yeah. um, of the, the figurehead head coach who's going to reach people. And then somebody behind who has the experience there. It worked um, really well for Brooklyn, you know, uh, and obviously, so having three of the best players in NBA history, you know, helps, but um, you know, yes, a situation like that would seem to make sense because you definitely need a stronger voice in here. Um, I don't, 
this was always part of the Brad conversation, Jeff. You know, what? It, when people were just saying fire Brad, it was who's next was always a massive concern. Now that we've arrived here, the names don't really sound that sexy. I really do think you have to go off the grid. I think they got to start thinking. Yes. I, all of these names people are throwing out here, I, I don't want anything to do with retreads or, or, or failed projects from before. Certainly not two and three time losers. You know, like I, Jason Kidd, please don't like, I don't want to see anybody else tweet about that. Like, and this you is gotta, what's you difficult. Gotta be sharp. About the ones you named, I think, make the most sense. It's guys who no have recirculated. Don't give me the recirculated coaches anymore. No. Like, find somebody and take a shot here and take a shot, but find somebody who's different than Brad. Brad, don't go hire some analytics dude now. Don't do well, it. What about Brad's current staff? That's a huge question, too. What becomes of them? All of a sudden, he's going to make that difficult decision with Jerome Brad Allen and Jay Laranega and all of them. And Brad is the type he does not want to fire anybody. He does not want anybody left behind. Jones. This is a difficult situation. Well, what about the front office? I mean, I assume he'll keep Austin, Austin Ainge, uh, and, and, and Zarin. But who knows? Do they want Well, that's to the thing. If he were in it for the long haul, it would make sense to clean house and bring your own people in. Maybe not in year one. I think you've got to step in with some continuity here in a new gig and just kind of roll through. But if this were a long-term gig, he's got to get his people in here to make it work. You can't go in there with the old regime. You can't go in there with Danny's kid, you know, as your as as, as your right-hand man. Can't that imagine it, no. Any sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, shocking. It really is because it it sets up so many difficult well, circumstances part, here. The, the yeah, the Danny part is not shocking. The it's Danny not. part is not shocking. No, but again, you. Ha I think Wick knew he had to make a big move, and again, getting back to it, this was the easiest way to make a big move. But yet you, you couldn't. You didn't want to pay out Brad's salary. You didn't want to pay that buyout, so you had to figure out a way around that. Well, you figured out a way around it for now. For now. Maybe you're hoping if you're with. So we got an airplane. We got some. Uh, we get some grass cutting outside. Weed whacking. I'll, I'll hop on mute. There's leaf blowing hours here. Okay. There's leaf blowing hours, guys. You can't do it whenever you want to do it. Anyway, Celtics are going to hold a press conference uh, coming up soon. Obviously, a ton of what questions. What time is that? What at time? Noon, at see. noon. We're going to hop off in five minutes here. Um, Jeff, like I said, you if you got a boogie, your phone's blowing up and stuff. That's totally fine. But they're at noon. The answers, first answer is what we want right now is, was it Danny's decision or Wick's? I don't think we're going to get it in this presser, but I think it's very important um, that, that we find out. The second is, the, to Jeff's point, the commitment here. Is this something Brad wanted? Um, and, you know, from everything you're saying, the answer is no. And I think that that. Um, I don't is, think so. I mean, is, I think, listen, you know, did he want it? Yeah. I mean, like when he's given the opportunity of like, well, you know, this isn't working. We got to figure something out. It's, you know, we're going to, like, I think Brad's smart enough to understand, like, this wasn't working. So what what else can we figure out here? And they kind of came to this conclusion that this was the best way to try to get it done. Jason Terry. I love Jason Terry, but no. Hi, guys. Cedric Maxwell here. I want to take a minute to tell you about Marigold Medical. I'm used to keeping my body in great shape, but with arthritis, even the most simple everyday task became unbearable. As soon as I called Marigold Medical, I knew I was in good hands. No drugs, no surgery, just an experienced team of caring professionals that wanted to get me back to doing the things I love. Make the call to Marigold Medical and get back to pain-free life. Mm -hmm.